Women and children first. Oh, how I have come to detest that phrase. Duff Gordon scandal. Baronet and wife rowed from drowning. Titanic cowards. That awful night began so well. We dined with American friends and Mr Ismay, owner of White Star Line. It started with a rumbling sound along the side of the ship. I remember a vase of flowers fell from the washstand, crashing to the floor. There was a sound like escaping steam, and I heard someone say there was ice on deck. Well, I hurriedly put on a hat and a fur coat over the warmest clothing I could find, and a steward insisted that we put on life belts. Strangely, it was perfectly calm on deck for a while. In truth, the crew had to persuade people to enter the lifeboats. It seemed madness at first to leave the seemingly untroubled ship and freeze on the ocean in a little boat. Cosmo pleaded with me to leave with my personal secretary, but I asked the officer in charge if he could board with us too, as the boat was barely a quarter full, and he was given permission. When we were some distance away, I remember seeing row upon row of shining windows extinguished as they slipped beneath the water. The terrible explosion, and then those awful cries as the great ship plunged to her grave, sucking the floating debris with her. Then the most terrible silence. For hours it seemed we floated amid the ice. Cosmo found some cigars which he shared with the other men. There were six firemen, two American gentlemen and the seamen in charge. I may have mentioned the beautiful clothes I'd lost. A fireman said, it's all right for you who can afford new ones. Our wages stopped when the ship went down. Dear Cosmo, impulsive as ever, offered each of the men money towards new kit. Once we landed in New York, the press began to publish their lies. It seemed it was a crime to have survived when so many had perished. It was said that we had commandeered the millionaire's boat through bribery and prevented it from returning to save the drowning. I ask you, what would you have done?